Hello and welcome to another Algebra 2 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 10, Lesson 12 on Modeling with Rational Functions, Equations, and Inequalities. For the last few lessons we've really been looking at the algebra of rational expressions and rational equations. How to solve rational equations, how to add and subtract rational expressions, and how to simplify them. Today we're going to look at some modeling that can be done with these expressions. Not a lot, of course, in this course. You'll work a lot more with that in pre-calculus and calculus. But let's jump right into it at this point. All right, creating a rational function. Rational functions can be used to model a variety of real-world situations, especially when comparing two quantities in a ratio or rate. And let's do that in exercise number one. Biologists are modeling the population of both bass and catfish in a particular lake. Each type of fish population has been modeled with a quadratic polynomial. The two models are shown below. For catfish, we have c of t equals 4t squared minus 64t plus 576. And for bass, we have b of t equals 5t squared minus 120t plus 870. In these models, t represents the number of years since the year 2020. Letter A, write a model for the ratio of the number of catfish to the number of bass. Call your function r of t. All right, well this should be simple enough and it really just relies on you knowing what it means to write a ratio. So pause the video right now and see if you can write an expression for R of T. All right, well we want the ratio of the number of catfish to the number of bass. Anytime it's the ratio of A to B, that's a divided by b. So literally, our function is just taking, right? We want the ratio of catfish to bass. So that's going to be 4t squared minus 64t plus 576 all over 5t squared minus 120t plus 870. Now one of the things I like about this problem is it really gets to the heart of what a rational function is, or even just what a rational expression is, which it's the ratio of two polynomials, right? And we kind of talked about that at the beginning of all of this, but then it might have gotten lost in all the algebra that we were doing and all the manipulation and equation solving. Let's take a look at letter B. Evaluate R of 16. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Give an interpretation of what this tells you. Well, you know, anytime we're gonna like evaluate any function, we're taking 16 and we're substituting it into this function and we're coming up with our answer. Now, if we did that sort of the long way, right, it would kind of look like this. R of 16 is equal to four times 16 squared minus 64 times 16 plus 576 all divided by 5 times 16 squared minus 120 times 16 plus 870. Now, whether or not you take that and you evaluate it like that, or whether you take 16 and store it in your calculator and then type this function in, doesn't really matter. One way or another, I guarantee you're using your calculator to work out what that's equal to. So pause the video now and come up with what that is. It's going to be a messy decimal, so round it to the nearest tenth. Pause the video now and go ahead and do that. All right, well what we find is that r of 16 rounded to the nearest tenth was 2.4. Now, of course, I didn't leave myself enough room for interpretation, uh, but we'll, we'll get there in just a second. Maybe I'll, I'll like squeeze the interpretation in here. Now, I didn't ask you to do the interpretation, but I'd like you to pause the video right now and think about what that means within the context of what we've to been told in this problem. All right, well, keep in mind, right, first, what does the input represent? The input, t, represented the number of years since the year 2020. So if we're 16 years from the year 2020, we're in the year 2036. Now, what does the 2.4 represent? It represents the ratio, right, the ratio of the number of catfish to the number of bass. 
So that means this model predicts in the year 2036 that for every one bass, there will be 2.4 catfish. Or you could say there will be 2.4 catfish for every one bass. So let's put that interpretation right here. In 2036, there will be 2.4 catfish for every bass. All right. You could even interpret it as saying there will be 2.4 times as many catfish as there are bass in 2036. That would be a great interpretation as well. All right, let's keep going. Letter C. Sketch a graph of R of t over the interval 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 50 on the axes below. Determine an appropriate scale for the y-axis and label the scale. All right, so again, I want us to keep in mind always throughout any of these applied problems exactly what all the variables represent. T represents the number of years since 2020. So we're going to be looking at this ratio of the number of catfish to the number of bass all the way out 50 years, all the way out to the year 2070, right? Now, we may have no idea what R of T should be, although we do know that at the 16-year mark, right, R of T is only 2.4. So what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to experiment with this a little bit. Take your calculator out. Put this in as, you know, F1 of X, if you will, all right? You're going to want to have X's there instead of T's. You're going to then want to set your X axis to be, if I can scroll here, 0 to 50. And you'll want to play around with your Y axis to get a graph, right, that you can really see. Don't make a graph where, you know, the Y axis goes from 0 to 1,000, okay? Because then you're not going to see the important sort of features on the graph. So I want you to go around and I want you to experiment some with this and see what you get. Pause the video now and play around with this graph. All right, well, I've got the magic of the board here and I get something like that, all right? And it's really cool. It's a graph that's got a single turning point, all right? It also, believe it or not, has a horizontal asymptote. We talked about those a little bit with exponential functions. We're not gonna worry about that too much here. And I found at least that the best window was actually, Y window was zero to three. In fact, if you had zero to 10, this graph would have been like just a little, little bump in there and it wouldn't have really looked all that good. So let's take a look at letter D. Biologists are interested in any times during the interval zero less than or equal to T less than or equal to 50, when the ratio of catfish to bass is at least two, in other words, double or more. Write an inequality that models these times and solve it graphically, round all times to the nearest tenth. All right, well, let's write the inequality. That's actually fairly easy to write because all we're doing is we're taking this, right? We want it to be at least two. So we just want to take this expression and set it to be greater than or equal to two. All right, so our actual inequality will be 4t squared minus 64t plus 576 all divided by 5t squared minus 120t plus 870 and we want that to be greater than or equal to 2. Maybe it's problematic when the, the ratio of catfish to bass is more than twice, right? Maybe that would be really problematic. So this is going to tell us all the years, right, since 2020, when we think that situation is going to occur. Now the question is, how do we solve it? Well, there are certainly algebraic techniques for solving this, but that is beyond the scope of this course. We just want to do it graphically. So pause the video now and see if you can find a way to graphically solve this inequality. All right, well, it's pretty easy, right? I want to think about it as, you know, if I set this thing equal to two, what would that look like? 
So I take my calculator out, I've already got this graph in, and I simply graph the equation y equals 2. And that's really cool, right? Because remember, this is the ratio of the catfish to the bass. It starts below 2. At this point, it's hitting a ratio of 2. Then it rises above it, goes back down to a ratio of 2, and finally falls below it. Now if we use the intersect command on our calculator, what we can find is that this intersection point is at 10.1 comma 2, and this intersection point is at 19.3 comma 2, and obviously all values of x, or better yet all values of t, between those two points are what we're interested in. Well, I guess at or between those two points because we want at least double. That's the greater than or equals to. So we can say 10.1 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 19.3. And there's our answer, right? Graphical ways of solving inequalities are certainly expected in this course, all right? And in pre-calculus, you'll work more with how to solve an inequality like that algebraically. Let's move on. All right, exercise number two. A new farm employee is hired to prune plants. The number of plants she can prune per day is given by the function p of t equals 115t plus 360 divided by t plus 9 for t greater than or equal to 0, where t is the number of weeks she has been on the job. All right, fantastic. Now, in the, pat in the previous problem, we created a rational function based on two polynomial functions that, right, that were predicting the populations of catfish and bass. In this particular problem, we are simply given a rational function that is predicting or modeling the number of plants that can be pruned per day by a particular worker, all right, as a function of the number of weeks that she's been on the job. So let's take a look at letter A. Evaluate P of zero. Give a physical interpretation of what your answer tells you. All right, well this one I think you actually could do without your calculator at all. Why don't you go ahead and come up with the value for P of zero and then read the context of the problem and understand what or give an interpretation of what P of zero is telling you. All right, well let's take a look at how we can do this without our calculator at all, right? P of zero is going to be 115 times zero plus 360, all divided by 0 plus 9. That's simply going to be 360 divided by 9, and that's equal to 40. Now, if you said, well, that's the y-intercept of the graph, you certainly wouldn't be wrong, but that's not a physical interpretation, right? That's just like a graphical, hey, it it's, you know, starts at 40, right? But what was p of t, right? p of t was the number of plants that she can prune per day right, as a function of the number of weeks she's been on the job. So in other words, right, she can prune 40 plants per day when she begins the job. So after zero weeks on the job, she can prune 40 plants. All right, so right from the get-go, according to this model, right? All right, let's take a look at letter B. How many weeks will it take before the employee can prune 88 plants per day? Set up, an, set up and algebraically solve an appropriate equation to determine your answer. So this time, I don't want to do it graphically. We'll get into some graphing work down in letter C. But I want you to set up an equation and solve it algebraically. Pause the video now and see what you can do. All right, well, you know, obviously what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing and I'm just going to do 115t plus 360 all divided by t plus 9 is equal to 88. 
And if you want to think about it as, you know, doing it by cross multiplication, I can put it as 88 over 1, in which case I can cross multiply. We just did a lesson on solving rational equations. So I can cross multiply and I'll get 115t plus 360 is equal to 88 times t plus 9. Maybe it would have helped if I had, you know, provided a little more room here, but I can do that by just doing this and then I have something that's going to get in the way. Give me just a second and let me move this thing down a little bit, move this down a little bit. Okay, that should be plenty of room. Eh, luck. Okay, let me go back up here. And now let's finish this thing off. So we've got 115t plus 360 is equal to 88t plus whatever 9 times 88 is, and that is 792, right? Uh, subtract 88t and subtract 360. No t squared here, so I don't have to use the zero product law. I'll get 27t is equal to 432. Divide by 27 on both sides, and t is equal to 16. So it will take her 16 weeks before she can prune 88 plants per day. Fair enough, right? She starts at 40 plants per day, and after 16 weeks, she's up to 88 plants per day. Excellent. All right. Now let's take a look at this. Letter C. Produce a graph of P of T for the first year. Determine an appropriate window for graphing. All right. Now, keep in mind, right, what T represents. T represents the number of weeks she's been working. And I want a graph of P of T for the first year. So this is where you have to know how many weeks there are in a year. I want you to pause the video now and play around with this and see if you can produce an appropriate graph. All right, great. Well, side note, there are 52 weeks in a year. So let's play around with this particular graph. Let's open it up. Um, I'm going to put it in as... 115x plus 360, all divided by x plus 9. Great, that doesn't help me very much. I'm going to go into my menu, into my window. I want to go from 0 to 52, right? 52 weeks in a year. Now, I don't have a great sense for what my y window should be. I'm going to give myself a little negative y value, even though that's maybe a little bit silly. I do know that when she begins, she's pruning 40 plants per year. I know after 16 weeks, she's pruning 88 plants per year. I don't know, maybe I'll go with 200. Ah, that's okay, but there's a lot of space up top that I don't need. So maybe I'll kind of modify it a little bit more. Um, let me go into my window settings. Maybe I can go just to 100 instead. Not bad, but still a little bit like I lose some there, so I'm going to go menu, window zoom, window settings. Maybe I will go, ah, come on, one more down, 125. I like that. That looks good, right? So we now kind of have our, our window, right? It's good. I can see the whole thing. The idea is, of course, that in the real world, right, when you are trying to explore a graph and you really want to understand what it looks like, you want to have the graph take up as much of the window as possible, right? I've got now 0 to 125 along my y-axis and 0 to 52 along my x-axis. So let's just get a little sketch of that. That's simple enough. Of course, it's simple enough and yet when I go over to the board here, I lose the calculator. So let me do this. Let me just make my graph. I'm going to go 52, 125. I think I'll even put the 40 as that y-intercept. And something like that. Good enough, right? I just want to kind of get a sense for what's going on here, right? Obviously, the number of plants she's pruning per day is going up as the number of weeks 
is increasing, but notice also that the graph is starting to flatten out, meaning that even though her skill with pruning the plants is going up, it's kind of the law of diminishing returns. It's not going up as quickly as time goes on. Let's take a look at letter D. The employee is considered fully trained when she can prune at least 75 plants in a day. Set up an inequality that models this situation. Determine the first week on which the employee will be considered fully trained. All right, fantastic. So what I'd like you to do is play around with this and certainly you can now solve the inequality graphically. Go ahead and do that. All right, so the inequality itself that I want is 115t plus 360 all divided by t plus 9. I want that to be at least 75, so I want it to be greater than or equal to 75. Now obviously to solve it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out very similar to the previous problem that we had where we were solving it graphically. I'm going to go in here, and in f2 of x I'm going to put in 75. All right, and great. Because now it's really showing me, right, you know, she's starting at 40, it's increasing, and right at this moment she hits 75. So let's go in and analyze the graph and find the intersection point. There and there. And I see that my intersection point is at 7.875 comma 75. So let's throw that onto our graph. I'm going to just minimize this. Put y equals 75 on there. And I'll have that point, which is at 7.875 comma, whoop, sorry, comma 75. Okay. Let's make sure that we've got that right. 7.875, beautiful. Okay, now, I mean, do I go with 7? Do I go with 8? Well, the first week when she'll be considered fully trained will be that 8th week. So we're going to say t equals 8. All right. Simple enough, right? Being able to model an inequality, right, using a rational function, being able to solve it graphically. Let's take a look at one last problem. Here we go creating a model based on rates. Sometimes you may have to create a rational equation or an equality based on knowledge you already have about rates. And these things can definitely be a little tricky. So let's take a look at exercise number three. It takes David 30 seconds more to run 400 meters than it takes Ian to run 200 meters. Again, let's read that one more time. It takes David 30 seconds more to run 400 meters then it takes Ian to run 200 meters. So if, let's say it takes 50 seconds for Ian to run 200 meters, he'd be running pretty slow, but let's say it took 50 seconds for Ian to run 200 meters, then it would take eight, David 50 plus 30 or 80 seconds to run 400 meters. Great. If Ian's speed is two meters per second greater than David's speed while running, then do the following. Letter A. Let t be the amount of time it takes for Ian to run 200 meters. Set up an equation that models the information given. Think carefully about the speeds of both runners. All right. Well, let me remind you that speed, or velocity, is distance divided by time. All right? I'd like you to pause the video right now and see if you can take all this information they gave and set up an equation, and it's going to be an equation that is a rational equation. It's going to have fractions in it. So pause the video now and see what you can do. All right, well first, let's think about Ian. And I'm going to specifically think about Ian's speed, right? So what do I know about Ian, right? I know that Ian takes t seconds to run 200 meters, so Ian's speed is two divided, 200 divided by t. All right, that's Ian's speed, right? It takes him t seconds to run 200 meters, so his speed is 200 divided by t. Simple enough. Now let's think about David's speed. 
All right. What I know about David is something about 400 meters, right? And I know that it takes David 30 seconds more than Ian, but when Ian's running 200 meters and David is running 400 meters. So David's speed is 400 divided by t plus 30. Okay, now remember, I know that they're running different distances, but it doesn't matter. If you take Ian's speed and divide it by the amount of time it takes him to run 200 meters, take David's um, 400 meters and divide it by how long it takes him to run 400 meters, which is 30 seconds more than it took Ian to run 200 meters, then that's David's speed. Now, what else do we know? We know Ian's speed is two meters per second greater than David's speed. Okay, Ian's speed is, right, two meters per second greater than David's speed. And actually, let me take David's speed and add two to it. I could have done two plus 400 over t plus 30, but this is really it. Ian's speed is two meters per second greater than David's speed. And there is an equation that really models everything that we were told in the problem. Everything we were told is there, right? It takes E and T seconds to run 200 meters. David takes 30 more seconds to run 400 meters. And Ian's speed is two meters per second larger than David's speed. Okay, letter B. Solve the equation from A to determine how long it takes Ian to run 200 meters. Okay, well, just a couple uh, lessons ago, actually I think it was in the last lesson, we saw how to solve rational equations. I'd like you to pause the video right now and solve this algebraically. All right, well, we're gonna use a method called clearing out the denominators. So what I wanna do is I wanna multiply both sides of this equation by something that'll cancel a t, and by something that'll cancel a t plus 30. And that's gonna be t times t plus 30, okay? So I'm gonna take this equation, and I'm gonna multiply everything by t times t plus 30. So t times t plus 30 over one, times 200 divided by t, equals t times t plus 30, over one times 400 divided by t plus 30 plus t times t plus 30. And yes, I do have to even multiply the two. Even though it doesn't have a, a denominator, I've got to distribute that multiplication by t times t plus 30 over everything. So let's do some canceling now. We've got that cancel. We've got this cancel and nothing cancels right there. So we've got 200 times t plus 30 plus 400 times t is equal to 2t times t plus 30. Just as a reminder, right, when we're solving equations that have fractions in them, our whole purpose is to get rid of those fractions, and we've done it here. Now let's clean this thing up a little bit. We've got 200t plus a whopping 6,000 plus 400t. Don't worry about the big numbers, just have confidence you're gonna be able to take care of them. All right, we've got a t squared. That means I wanna to try to get everything equal to zero, but maybe I'll do a little bit more work on this side. I have 600t plus 6,000, just combining those like terms. 2t squared plus 60t. All right, just making sure it's all looking good so far. It does not look good. What's going on here? Um, oh, I see. That 400t should be on the other side of the equal sign. I am so sorry. Here, my equal sign got moved into the wrong place. I knew that something just felt wrong. That should be a plus. Whew, man, that makes me feel better now. Like, why aren't the numbers feeling familiar? Okay, now maybe we'll, we'll, we'll gather some like terms on this side. So we now have 400t plus 60t 
is 460T. My apologies for that, folks. Come on, I just want to extend the page. There we are. Now let's get it all equal to zero. So we'll subtract a 200T and a 6,000 from both sides. And maybe we'll get rid of that little dot. That's gonna be zero equals 2T squared plus 260T minus 6,000. All right, ooh, man. Now, one thing about this, right? We see that we've got a trinomial where the leading coefficient isn't one, so maybe we're thinking we've gotta do the AC math method of factoring. Well, notice, right, two, 260 and 6,000 are all divisible by two. So I can actually eliminate that leading coefficient by dividing both sides of this equation by two. Now remember, that division by two is gonna distribute. So I'm gonna have something now that looks like that. Now that might be a little intimidating, right? Because I gotta think about two numbers that have a product of negative 3,000 and have a sum of positive 130. And I remember when I first looked at this problem, I was just like, oh, I got it. You know, it's um, 100 and it's 30, right? Because 100 times 30 is 3,000, and 100 plus 30 is 130. The problem is one's got to be positive and one's got to be negative. So in fact, the two numbers that I need are actually 150 and negative 20, right? 150 times 20 is 3,000, and 150 plus negative 20 is positive 130. So all of this is now going to factor, whoops, don't want to lose that, into t plus 150 times t minus 20. So I'll get t plus 150 equals zero, and t is negative 150, and t minus 20 is zero, and t is 20. And this problem's gotten so long at this point, I can't even remember what I was solving for. Ah, oh, that's right. I was solving for the amount of time, the number of seconds, that it took Ian to run 200 meters. And I found that that is 20 seconds. This one is rejected because Ian can't possibly run 200 meters in negative 150 seconds. So, that is our final answer. My apologies for that uh, misplaced equal sign up here. It's easy to do though, you know, as I'm canceling things out and then I'm going 200 times t plus 30 is equal to 400 times t, right? And I had a plus there instead of the equals. These two quantities are on the same side of the equal sign and thankfully I caught it because something didn't feel right. All right, let's wrap this up. So rational Expressions, rational equations, rational inequalities come up actually quite a bit in the physical world, especially when you are working with ratios like we did in that first problem, or sometimes just rational expressions or functions are given to you, like in that second exercise, and sometimes we need to create a rational equation or rational inequality based on rates most often because rates are naturally fractions. Any way you do it though, whether you're solving things algebraically or graphically as we saw multiple times, you have the tools to attack every problem in the homework on this particular uh, lesson. You'll work more with these types of problems in pre-calculus and calculus because they are very important in the real world in a whole different variety of contexts. For now, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another Algebra 2 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and until I see you again, Keep thinking and keep solving problems.